Hi everyone, uh, my name is Daniel Wagner. Um, I'm working since a month at SUSE, that's why everything is green. Um, you're wondering why just my name is on the slide, the other guys bailed out providing information to this talk, so I'm just giving it myself. I will point out, yeah, I'm pointing out to those guys uh, in the, during the talk at the right point. So this talk is basically um, the summary how we came up to provide uh, the stable RT patch series for now 15 years. Yeah, yeah, for, yeah. It's so the first part was just the, the development tree, and later on, Stephen started to do the stable tree releases. And so this is basically just the summary how we did that, how we got there, and what what's going on. So um, just basically the structure of the talk. Just first bit of the patch flow. What we have, we have some so uh, the ideas how the process works and um, where. The the tooling basically is what we have now as tooling. Um, so the first part is, um, so we have, we, we're starting with, with the mainline releases. We don't um, use every, or we don't provide for every mainline release a new version. Just the usual idea was like, like every second version, except we hit like a stable, uh, an LTS tree, then we want to provide the st uh, RT patches for that. So the, the development, uh, starts basically on one of those trees and so what you get is <coughs> basically just a patch que queue for that tree if we s finish with the first version and um, so if you look next release um, you get a new version of the patch series but it looks slightly different maybe it's bigger ma ma sometimes it's slow uh, uh, fewer patches in the queue or yeah, so it's changing over time. You don't, it's not always the same. Reason being is we have patches which get into the series at one point and they live through each release and then some th they, they disappear for some reason. Um, this could be anything, right, like this and we have things which come to the, tr uh, to the tree and we, uh, get lost again. And most of the time it's something like this. We have a patch which gets split into two patches um, or we start merging patches together. And one main reason how to get patches lost in the tree or disappearing is if they get merged into mainline. So what, what's usually happening is a, a patch or a feature gets developed in the tree, in the develop tree, it gets stabil st stabilized, we get feedback and after some time we see, okay, this feature works and then it's ported to mainline basically and applied. Um, so this work has finished now. Everything which is not real-time related has been merged at this point. The only thing which is left at this point is the preempt RT um, specific parts, which we hope to see get merged very soon. <laughs> it's like the year of the desktop. <laughs> hmm? Oh, there's a keynote on that one, okay. Um, so, um, okay, and another uh, other thing what we have in our workflow obviously, if we need a patch from upstream, basically from the main line, uh, it gets also integrated into the series. So this is basically everything what we, we have done with the, with the series uh, for each release. And this is basically the ingredients of this um, flow of, of, of everything, uh, how you, you create the patches. Well, any questions? Because I'm too fast. <laughs> Okay, um, so the, the development tree looks exactly, it has, this, um, has the same thing basically as stable trees. What I showed you now was basically stable releases and, um, or the development releases. And if you look inside one of those releases, so let's say we have version 5.2, 
And during the 5.2 um, development phase, we also have exactly the same thing happening as we have seen between the big releases. So within one release, we have the same process as over the whole, um, or the stable, uh, stable trees. And this is, again, patches get merged, get split, um, and we also uh, do the um, integration with mainline. And what you can already see in this slide is the, the numbering scheme, what we came up was basically um, you just add the dash RT and the version number of the RT is always increasing for every release you do. Um, and there is a reason behind that we always increase it. But uh, it's, it's uh, let me come back to that later. But it's, it's important to see that, that the, every release we have, we know that if we increase one number in the end, okay, there's a new version. And um, there is some information encoded in that one. So again, um, this is also what we do with mainline. It's like backport and forward point. So this is, I guess, very simple. So um, this is more interesting. Um, so we have different sources for the patches. So mainline basically is our target and the development tree contains um, all the um, patches which should go mainline. The stable tree is basically um, an, how do you say that, uh, an, an service to the users that they can use for a while stable patches. Because in the end, the development team is not doesn't really need that stable thing unless we get feedback out of it. And uh, in the past, I don't know, did we get a lot of features or, or not the bug reports? Well, not to this point. Yeah, so, so it was. I played one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so there weren't many um, like bug reports coming back to mainline. Sometimes there is something we, we uh, it was. Div um, reported in the stable tree that, okay, this doesn't work anymore or it breaks. And, but then usually if you have the workload and you know what you're looking for, you see it as in the development tree. So that was usually, and then that fix goes first in the development tree. And yeah, we, yeah. Yep. yeah I just wanna make sure that we let everyone know we kind of follow the stable, nothing goes in stable unless it's either in the development tree or in mainline. In fact, the way I've always done it is I don't, if it's a mainline, I wait for it to get to stable before I put it pull it into the stable RT. Yes, yes. But speaking of bug reports, I just want to just inject right here. If everyone noticed that 419 hasn't been updated in a long time, it's because I hit a, I did a recent merge of, the st I did the stable pull into the stable RT and a bug showed up. And right now I haven't been able to solve it. So I'm afraid to, I don't want to push a <coughs> buggy tree and I ha haven't had the, t the cycles to hopefully put it. So I just sent an email just now with saying, can we get together to fix 419 so we can actually get that moving again. Okay, Just to yeah. let everyone know why there was 419 hasn't been shown. It wasn't because I've been ignoring it. Yeah, so so we are basically we are a team of four people um, doing the stable RT trees. And that means any one of us has like maintenance ship over one and updating the stable RT tree. We have the development team uh, around Thomas and Sebastian doing um, that work and so we are just, we d and yeah, so, <laughs> and this is how those patches work. So we want, what we try to do in the stable tree at least is not doing any except like, like bug fixing uh, changes because um, this is usually where things get really, really difficult to handle over time. So we always try to get the development tree uh, working for a longer time. So. The branches we have also on every tree we have branches and this is um, this is where where we basically make sure we have different kind of branches. The first one is is always a merge branch. That means you can always pull for from patches from that tree. And the second uh, with the dash patches contains the rebased or just the, the, the splitted out patches as patch series. And the dev devil tree has just another 
um, uh, uh, branch which contains basically is the backup of the patches sent out to the mailing list, but it's not it's not that important. Um, the stable trees also contain just we have one merge um, branch and one which contains the separate uh, patches. So this is basically patches on top of of the stable trees from Greg. And sometimes it contains like a backport additionally we need or something like that, but those patches stay fairly the same. And um, this makes it really easy for most downstream users to, to just pick that version. If you have um, a different, <laughs> if you have a different um, kernel or a different kernel version. So Greg has a question. I missed it. What's the difference between patches and rebase? Uh, so the the um, the patches basically the patches uh, the 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 sent out release on the mailing list. So we have the the the, the devil tree basically just stores the version which is sent out to the mailing list. It, it could be a file system in the end. So it it doesn't contain a, a git tree in normal phase. It's just a file. Yeah, exactly. Just a quilt tree, basically, or the, and we don't uh, for the stable tree. Uh, we just upload that to the, um, the, the 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 server, the kernel.org. Yeah. What's yeah? I show it later. So about the tags. Um, so we have basically the the the, the rule that the, the you just do one thing during a release. Either you update your tree. Uh, the, on new stable release, or you change the RT patch set. You never do the same thing at one thing because it's harder to debug. It's really hard if later on to figure out what, what was the cause when something doesn't work anymore. So that means um, in the end, um, you just can look at the tag and you know what happened during that phase compared to the previous thing. So if, if, if the stable version goes up, one, you know it's just a stable update. If if the stable version stays the same and just have an RT, a dash RT number goes up one, you know, okay, the patch set has changed internally. And, and, and then we have the, uh, and then we have the uh, problem where um, you update one or you do the merge for stable and something changed where now you need to get a patch from the develop tree <laughs> to make it work again. Yes, okay, that, that's what it said. There's a great green zone where you just need something to get it working again. Yeah. But the, uh, usually it's just for one release. The next release you, you get it through the stable tree again, for example, or what a different way. But I said the patch set stays pretty much the same when it hits the stable stage. For the development tree, that changes a lot, up and down. Yeah. Um, Okay, so I think the, that slide, yeah, so it's just again the, the numbering scheme. So we have uh, below, we have the stable releases and you see the second and third one is the same. And we just, um, that means we have introduced a new patch because RT19 to RT20 goes one up and, and uh, the stable version number stays the same. So you can see just, uh, so the, the, the naming scheme is, um, is, is where, it, where we, we basically encode what's happening without writing release notes and so on. We still do that. <laughs> so, and yeah, so we, as I said, we have two. Yep. Yeah. Did you actually increase to 21? I mean, uh, that this thing is, uh, and they're basically the same thing, so it's uh, basically the same patch that goes uh, over there. Yeah, okay. Um, just, just to understand that. So this was, yeah, the, not a change basically in the, in the patch series, yeah. I kind of remember this. Um, I finished the uh, RT19, I went to, uh, RT19 to 20 was just added patches. After I got that going, someone found a bug, okay. and then I had to send another, do another one, so I added another patch. So if I understand it right, 19 to 20 was just from upstream because the thing we're 
things were broken and you, you needed it. No? Well, yeah, the, uh, there's certain things that RT defines that, oh, we, we're going to do something slightly different, or we, we found something. That, well, usually when we backport patches, it is something that we either found a bug or a, 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 sometimes it's just latency. Like, oh, we found a path that is like non-deterministic, so we need to fix that. So we fix that, and that gets pulled into. So it's not really always a bug, but well, to us it's a bug. So that was moving from 19 to 20. Yeah, going from 19 to 20, I went to, yeah, don't worry, we'll get home with that. But I, so I went from 19 to 20 was backporting stuff from the RT Bell that was, either was fixes that, you know, they found for mainline that we said, okay, these should be backported. And sometimes it's devices, new devices that are being used and we do things like that. But then after I released it, a bug report came in on the new release. See, I think the, the confusing part here is the base kernel remained the same across those three. Right, because the stable hasn't changed. Okay. Yeah. I haven't pulled from Greg. We, we're still doing Greg. So when, what Daniel's trying to say is, uh, you notice that when we go from 31 to 37, we went up here. That just means that I just touched, I just pulled right. in from Greg just and did nothing Greg. else. Right. Yep. You just ported the, the RT patches to that stable. Yeah, right. that, I mean, here what confuses me is that uh, it seems that like the same patch uh, oh, yeah, on the, the two. Yeah, so it's like an additional patch really from the patch, but uh, yeah, to fix I, another uh, that, that just, I, uh, I should have. Right, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Oh, and maybe something else uh, yeah. which is interesting on that slide is, as, as uh, just pointed out, so we have the first uh, is the 31 stable release, and then we have the next is 37, and we have just RT18 and RT9. So there was no um, release of the stable tree between 31 and 37 because it just merged, right? We have, and, and Greg has a high frequency relay speed. We can't <laughs> keep up with him. <laughs> I, I try to do about once a month. So that means that usually that's a jump, <laughs> like once yeah. a month, like boom, 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 boom. Um, I don't know if you remember what I mentioned about before is when sometimes you will see an RT tag without a rebase tag. And what happened was, so say if I go over a month, I will pull in as long as it doesn't conflict. If yep. I get any, if I pull in, there's no conflicts, and it runs tests, it will jump from 31 to 37. Yep. But say if 33 conflicted, I would then pull in 33 by itself, go RT18 to RT19 on the 33 tag, make sure, fix all the conflicts, and then go on. So uh, if you see no rebase, that means there was a conflict at that level. And I keep it in the change log. You'll see files conflicted. Yeah. And then just in case, because you said, we want the RT tags where possible bugs can happen. Yeah, so we just basically annotate those points which of interest. Mm -hmm. And uh, usually if we have a release, we have te some te uh, run some tests on it. So we have some confidence that stuff works. And um, as I said, we have just two trees that just was, I think, just pure confidence. Uh, just happened because, uh, I mean, we could have everything in one tree, probably, I don't know. So we have just, that's the upstream development tree, um, and we have the stable tree, and. That's, I think it might be somewhat historical. Well, we kind of did it separately, probably be easier, but I think historical is because uh, the stable tree came, came first, because yeah. uh, the RT patches were just Git. Yeah, yeah, it was just um, uh, quote, well, trees, yeah. quote trees. Yeah, so there's no reason, technical reason, to do it this way. You can you can have it in the same tree. This doesn't matter, and you can see already here we have different uh, maintainers working on the different RT re, um, stable trees. So 14 is Stephen. No, no, it's Tom Seeds. Uh, Tom, yeah. I'm, like I said, it's been a while because I said I've been fighting a bug and I still, I'm way behind in getting that's, a 419. That's from last week. <laughs> right. Yeah, so, and, and here's just, uh, as I said, if you, the main branch just is, is always a merge. You see, we just have, in this example, you see the development tree. So we have the 5.210 stable release merged and then there are uh, some bug fixes on top of it that real time still works. So this is, this is what um, Sebastian is doing there. And he pulled that additional bug fixes in that release. And if you look at the rebase tree, you just see this um, serialized view on top of the 5.2.10 release. So this is, and this worked out pretty well so far. Yes, please, over there. 
I had a question on the series file in the RT Devil Tree, and I was wondering like how um, do, how often is that like up to date? Like if I look at the series file and I look at like um, some of the prerequisites, will I mean will some of those will that get updated if some of the prerequisites got pulled into the tip into tip tree or? What's, wait, I'm confused. The series file, you mean? The series the file for the quilt for the RT Devel. There's a tarball oh, that has. Actually, you want to talk to the person that's to your left over there. <laughs> <laughs> Throw him the mic. You could probably be answering that. All right, that's very good. <laughs> um, I usually sort it once in a while and keep it updated. And usually I keep at the top those files that should vanish in the next release. And that's how it's organized. Usually I try to um, summarize by topic so I know those and those are more or less the same area that they, they get touched. So if I understand that correctly, basically they disappear when they're merged upstream. That's correct. Upstream meaning uh, Minus's tree. <laughs> Who's ambiguous or not? Okay, yeah. So, um, so, Basically, the interesting part is what of those works or those steps I just explained can be automated. And it turns out that the whole working on the patch set itself is what you know. It's Quilt, Git, some editor, and a lot of brain power. That's, there's, I think there's nothing really different to any development uh, process. The, the I think wh where we have some, some additional value now is, is how we, we do the whole tagging, rebasing and everything. We have a tool basically nowadays which is based on Steven's um, earliest uh, version or first version or uh, how to do it. It consisted back then with I think like 10 scripts and <laughs> Many steps. I, I still have the web page. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it was. It's very. It's a very good work. It's because you have to figure out all those steps, how you want to do it, how where where you encode which information and everything. And this is was the starting point for the tool I mentioned here. And um, now I'm just showing you how that tool works because we think it might be useful outside our work. So. Let's go into that part. So, um, so the first step in, in for, for a release is basically just get Greg's update. And so that is the Git workflow. I'm showing the Git workflow probably could do it differently, but that's how it works. So you see we got the 190 release. And then we can just look at what we've done in the past. So we see, okay, we have um, the last release was the 189 release, and now we have the new one. So let's work on that one. It's uh, um, and basically I'm in the main branch. That means the the one which is merging. It's the 44-RT branch. So um, usually you just try to merge it, and if you're lucky, it works out. So that means you have no conflict and you're happy. This is where we, if, if, if Greg has like released already 191, for example, I would just go for 191 and see if it works and I just skip over 190. Um, in the conflict case, yeah, that's where you need a lot of brain power usually because you have to figure out why is it conflicting, where is it coming from, what is the impact, you have to check what have what has changed in different parts of the kernel would com conflict that and sometimes it's just trivial but sometimes uh, especially uh, yeah sometimes it's it's um, we had for example in, uh, the problem that some of the RT code went in a, in the different version upstream and came back ported over the stable tree that was the <laughs> RT mutex stuff with the priority inversion it was like Ugh! And that's where I say this, this is where it's getting really hard. And then the good thing is now, since we are like maintaining four different people, the trees, we can like look at each other's solution and see how did they solve that and <laughs> why. 
<laughs> so you always hope that someone is faster than you. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think I wait so long? <laughs> so in, in the case when that happens, what do you guys default to? Do you default to what the upstream did or do you default to your old stuff or a mix? I usually, would th actually sometimes I just default to the upstream. I try to get then closer to upstream depending on how, if it was specific, like the RT Mutex one. I basically said, screw it, I'm taking the RT because I, it's kind of contained. But if, it's, but if it's one of these things like the work queues right now, which is what I'm fighting with, uh, we had a whole separate thing of work queues. Um, Sebastian changed everything in uh, Devel. It, stuff got up in upstream because he found bugs in upstream, fixed it. That came back down, and now I have these bugs that I can't fix because I don't have the new code. And that's almost a complete rewrite of all the work queue code. <laughs> okay. All right, that's good. Yeah, and I guess it depends on the um, how current the, the, the stable tree is. So for in my case, the 4.4 tree, I don't change that much anymore. I just keep it going, and I hope it dies eventually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah there, there are users out there. They're brave. They're very brave. Um, after the merge has worked for the, 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 the merge branch, basically, I'm going to the rebase tree and just do a rebase. If there's no, was, there was no merge conflict previous in on the normal branch, it will just work here the same way. Just get rebased, everything looks good. If you have the merge conflict there, you just have to fix that patch, which, so yet first you fix it in the merge tree, and um, then in the rebase tree, you have to do the same thing on the patch you itself. You can uh, use the git uh, rerref in this case. That will, uh, so if you fix uh, the, the conflict yeah. while doing the merge, that will basically record your fix and uh -huh. apply it automatically here. So you ah. don't have to do it. Okay. okay. Well, here's the issue that with this. It's the fact that the rebase is a series of patches. And sometimes you'll have a f break in one file that affects three different patches. So now you, you, know, you can't really use what you, so on, the, on the, the merge side, it's one fix. You don't care. You just fix everything done. Now when you do the patches, there's three patches. You got to fix partial, partial, partial. <laughs> so it, that happens a lot. <laughs> and that's where it's like, oh. <laughs> It doesn't apply that automatically. So I guess in simple cases it yeah. might help, and if it doesn't, I mean, in different cases it well, d d doesn't well, work. <laughs> well, the thing is, you and I have a, sp a sort of a special case. A lot of times we do see the simple uh, case because we're maintaining a Franken kernel, yeah, yeah. Rel, rel RT, and so we've got stuff coming in from two other different directions, and so Git re, -re, -re works a little bit better for us because we don't have the big span that you guys will run into. So. so what I usually do is I have, when I hit that conflict on the rebase side, I just say, okay, do a diff of this and just do, I'll just cherry pick the fixes okay. yeah. based on, I read the patch that was changed, okay, why is this changed and I'll cherry pick what I need. That usually works, but then there's some times where it's the same line, you, you gotta do it in stages. Yeah. And what I do is usually that thing that I verify that my changes on both branches are identical. If, uh, if you don't do that, obviously, you, yeah. So this is very simple, then everything is happy. So this is the whole part where I said you can't basically automate it more than this. This is the tooling the, the everyone knows so far. So the, what you should do then before doing a release is testing. And there is <laughs> a compile ship it. Get all the file, compile, ship it. It works, yeah. So um, there is, we, we have, we don't have yet some, some sort of central service which works for everyone to, to test the kernels. So we have the 
he uh, the working or the setup at Linuxtronics for stable work. I think Sebastian is using it that whole time. For me, it's it's not working right now. I don't know why. Um, so I have my own setup currently doing this, but it's not as good it should be. Basically, I've just have a, a script creating, uh, building a few binaries, uh, kernels, and deploying on, on, on my test machines, and I'm using currently Lava to, to get the back uh, reports. I mean, this is, yeah, you can do it in different ways, and eventually we probably find out to use common infrastructure. <laughs> so this is, this is, for me, it works pretty well, but uh, as I said, this is kind of off tof topic. Currently, at uh, which kind of tests are you running? What, what are you running? So what I've, I've started to do is um, I'm using the RT test suite and uh, I have started to send patches to make it more um, consistent, for example, in the... And thank you so much for that. Yeah, more to come. Yeah, we, we do appreciate it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> So what we um, so what I'm doing is um, Lava has or Linaro better to say has a um, test suite, which is called Test Definition I think, and there there are the tests are kind of bundled together and and the Lava framework basically executes those tests, and what I've I've doing I've just integrated all the different RT tests tools. And um, this is what you see here, basically. So the, the smoke tests are the different configuration for preemption. So non-preemption not off, preemption on, and so on. This, these are the one, and those with the tag preempt RT, there's one of those RT tests running like, I don't know, cyclic test or, or PI stress. Do you run any non-RT specific tests? Like, you know, do you do a net? Net per for LTP? Or no, not so far. That's okay. what I'm saying. This is, I mean, this takes a lot of time sure. setting up and maintaining it. And I mean, that's one of our concerns is once we've got ourselves an RT kernel, making sure that everything that ran on uh, a non RT kernel like RHEL yeah. does w behaves the same way functionally. On, uh, on yeah, th RT this kernel. is why I try to, to get at least the, the test suite or test definition from um, Linaro integrated those tests we have already that it's simpler to use it. I, I, re I just rely on users. Yeah. <laughs> so when I release something, like I said, I got the one I release, I reached out and someone used it and said, oh, this doesn't work anymore. It didn't work, yeah. So that's <laughs> could it be an idea to try to rely on like the zero, zero day testing or any other automation? I mean, just to run, not the RT. Uh, side of things, but just to verify that, uh, okay, I mean, a new rebase or a new version of RT, but working on normal system doesn't this have problem. Not sure. Hi. Um, yeah, I talked to Zero Day about that because that was one of my interests as well. One of the challenges with Zero Day is they have about 90 test suites, and each test suite has a lot of tests on it. And I found the cyclic test in there was actually out of date, and some of the tests are, but um, I'm definitely getting them ramped up to actually start doing the RT test. Once it hits mainline, there's a mainline configuration. They're not really set up to run the RT stable branches. Um, but once it does go mainline, I also talked to Osadl because at one point we had talked to Osadl about maybe doing some CI work, but one of their test engineers left and another test engineer came in, but they're still kind of more focused on safety Linux and long-term uh, analysis and statistic justification for safety Linux. So I don't really think they have the bandwidth to do that either. So I was going to work with Zero Day on that. Yeah. And how about uh, kernel CI? Can't you get your RT3 monitored by kernel CI? Yeah, um, I mean, this is, as I said, um, this would be having this kind of central infrastructure someone maintains, it would be nice to use it, yes. I mean, I, I'm for, for debugging or stuff like that, it's good to have like an on-site environment where you can <coughs> do stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm using that for basically getting like, like this confident and say, okay, I didn't screw it up too much. And then you ship it basically and see if you get feedback. And it would be better, to, obviously, if we could also have this um, 
many many kernels here labs are relying on lava as well so i mean your lab could be integrated within kernel ci and yeah and kernel ci could just monitor the rt tree and yeah. build it so the way you want so i guess yeah so we have for example we have i have access to the cip lava setup as well where i can run on their specific hardware some tests and obviously one one thing i'm already hitting here is what is kind of different to the normal lava or the test suites is they run they should run for a long time and this is where some we kind of change the test environment for for everything because we want to run it like 24 hours with load and um yeah you yeah, yeah I, I was more thinking about the the, the problem yeah, I, I think raised that the, the thing that are running on the regular kernel should run on the RT kernel. Ah, well. yeah, no, yeah. yeah. And that, that, that would be nice to have the kernel. Ah, okay, yeah. I see. I the think what they're trying to say is basically, I mean, we do our own RT stuff, but for what normal stuff we ah, yes. probably could use there, so just run whatever. So make it work like upstream does. Yeah. Make sure that's still there. Yeah, boot up an RT kernel that's going to run in the regular yeah. test suite. Yeah. 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 And yeah, I think, as I said, this kind of off topic, bec because I think we just have to figure out how we want to do in the long term uh, with mainline. And yeah, and the, and the question comes down to is when um, RT becomes mainline, where's the status of it? Right now, right now, I think we're deciding to say we'll keep the long term stables still going, but eventually they will be faded out because the real times, Greg's will be maintaining it. What? <laughs> 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 well, three months is a blast in front of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, we love you, Greg. <laughs> anyway, um, this is a lot of discussion which should happen in the next uh, coming days, weeks, months. Um, so now, Coming back, basically, um, after the test run, you're confident, now you do the release. And as I said, we have, um, it based on, on Steven's work, and we have this small tool, um, which makes it really simple to use. So first you say, okay, I want to commit what I have done. You, it's nothing else than git commit with the, ta uh, with and code basically just with the right name and everything. So it, every release has is consistent in the naming scheme and what's written in there. And so it will just say, okay, this is Linux version, blah, blah, blah. Then you tag it. Uh, did you, does your tool um, update the uh, local var? Or yes, your, yes. Yours updates, My, I do that manually. That's why I so this it. does everything what you're doing. Okay. <laughs> in one step. <laughs> Yeah, you should use it. <laughs> Once you get to be my age, you can't do anything manually because you'll eventually forget. Yeah, so I know, I've done that. Yeah. yeah, so so this does in the background a few things, uh, which just gives you the same type of, or the, the, the same RT release. And then you do the tag, which is, as I said, there's some con naming convention in there, uh, so it makes it consistent. Um, so after that, <coughs> you do the same thing for the rebase tree. And the thing which is changing, it just says, okay, this is the rebase release and this is the rebase tag. I, I guess you're missing quotes. Otherwise, you're passing rebase as a parameter to get. No, it's tagging there. What? Oh, oh, on the bottom part, is, well, it says tagging, but what I'm saying on the first, it yeah, says yeah, this, commit. Uh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we can fix that. It's, it's easy to fix. Um, so, and then uh, this is, kind of not so cool yet is that we have uh, currently I just provide the, the, the two versions, the old version, the new version of the tag. This could be changed. My script automates that. Yeah, the <laughs> thing is why I didn't do that is uh, one version, um, I had several in intermediate releases and I couldn't figure out which one, but now we changed the way how we release it so we never release or we merge always everything to the release and done with it. So that could be automated, so figuring out which version. So what that thing does basically is creating the, um, the quilt series or patch series. It's just taking basically what's in rebase and writing the series file. It's, 
I said everything, every OS step is all very simple to make it manually, but do it consistent, fast, you will screw it up. <laughs> so that's why we just uh, have this small tool. And then um, signing it, as I said, it's very simple, but you will screw it up if you do it manually. And this is where we differ to the two trees. And the stable tree upload their patches to a kernel uh, file dump area. <laughs> and this is using the kernel.org way to upload stuff with CUP. And this is, this is something just specific for the infrastructure we are using. It could be, it's, it's not that, I mean, you could just do it differently here and having a different location to upload the patches. Um, then the next step is to push it. It's again, you just could use git push and be, be sure you push the right tags and uh, this command will just make sure you just push the stuff you're saying you want to push, not additional tags and so on, so it don't clutter the whole tree. And you're done. You're saying, okay, this is the release. It creates uh, the, the template thing and a uh, message you can just send out. And Greg has a question. <laughs> so kernel.org can create the patches and everything off a tag now. Okay. So I don't push, I don't use KF anymore. Oh, right. Um, so we can do, it's a, there's, a, there's a tool Constantine has out there. You sign and push a git note and it checks out the tree does everything and it goes off of it. Okay, yeah. Okay. So it just saves you a bunch of steps and especially when you're traveling, sometimes KF, uh, patch files aren't that big, but it's it's a pain. I just have to push one note and it goes. Okay. So wait, um, it knows the, uh, so it makes the tarball, you mean? The, the tarball, I know the tarball. Tarball and the patches. And the, the, and the you know, you have the patch files. The, the thing you were doing the KF for, Yeah. yeah. It, it does that too. So I have to take a look at that because I have to see how, does it know it just between the two releases that it makes a patch difference? So okay. It, it, you might have to work with Constantine, to, but there's no reason you guys shouldn't also have the same thing. Yeah, because the rebase thing is it shows it makes every single patch like a patch. Yeah, no, no, that part. It's just the, it's just the creating it on kernel.org. Okay. Yeah. 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 So. Con he's here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. That just saves you. I mean, I've switched and it made my life so much easier. Okay, yeah. So in the end, it's these steps uh, we're doing right now is, as I said, we do the merge, we do the rebase stuff, then testing, and these steps. And that's really, I mean, if, if there's no merge conflict, you can do that without the testing in five minutes, which is nice. <laughs> um, oh, wait, what does SRT stand for? <laughs> Stable release tool. Stupid name. Did you put a URL for Stable or did you do? Uh, I thought it was Stephen Rosted's tools. Well done. <laughs> um, just uh, another quick info here before ending because we're running out of time. Um, if you want to do a release candidate, you you do the same thing, you just back, you change the, the tree as you want, and then testing, and the diff is basically just during the commit phase, you say which release candidate version it is. And that's it, does the same thing. Uh, so the same steps, everything. Nice, right? So this talk was for Steven, <laughs> to motivate him to use this tool. <laughs> Well, that's why you should have called it my name. No, uh, so where's the uh, Git repository for it? Did you post that already? Um, yeah, I think. I think you did at one point, but it's yeah, yeah, it up here. Yeah, let me. So this is all open source for everyone to use. Yeah. What? No, I did it. <sighs> yeah, the slides are on the website, but I want to make sure it's on the slides. I think. Well, I did you have it right there? Did you go down? I saw it, but maybe not. No, uh, no, it's not that. No, I forgot to <laughs> put it down. <laughs> That's sad. <laughs> so just go to the shell window and actually you know, type in all your associated information. Oh, here. Here, here is the oh, link. Sorry. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Okay, so it's.
currently on GitHub on my site. Maybe useful for someone else as well. Okay. It's time over. Question left. A hallway. <laughs> okay, thank you.